Hello everyone, the Aussie Critter Keeper here today and we're going to be looking at my Eastern Blue Tongue enclosures and just how I look after them. I hope uh, you enjoy. Now these are my two Eastern Blue Tongue lizards, Ollie and Molly. They are about 18 months old and I keep them in an outdoor enclosure that we've made out of a uh, dryer container. And yeah, these guys hibernate during winter. It's just come out of winter now, so they've just come out. And uh, that's why they're a bit dopey at the moment. But these guys are kind of found on the eastern side of Australia. They're one of the largest species of skinks found in Australia. And they're live bearers, meaning that they give birth to live young. Now, eastern blue tongue lizards, they wanna they give birth to some, uh, like the most live young out of all the blue tongues. They can have up to 20 in a litter. So that's um, pretty ridiculous. Now these guys are still fairly small. I only got them last year, but they'll uh, definitely grow much bigger. They're also uh, omnivores, so they eat a variety of meat and vegetables and fruits. And they definitely love their fruits. So you've got to make sure they don't get too addicted to it because they um, the sugars in like watermelon and banana and stuff, they absolutely love it. And uh, something that blue tongues love tremendously are snails so if you've um, just got to be aware if you do snail pellets in your garden stuff make sure you probably want to stop that if you have pet blue tongues especially when they're outdoors because if you feed them a, uh, a poison snail that might not go so well but yeah overall these are awesome to look after as you can tell the reason they're called blue tongues is because of their blue tongue and uh, I think that's all I need to talk about these guys and I'll uh, show you their enclosure now. So this is where I keep my Eastern Blue Tongue Lizards in this uh, landscaped enclosure I've built for them. As you can see there's a bit of, there's some vegetation for them and plenty of logs. The uh, substrate is a mulch so they can easily hide in there. and. Yeah, you got to make sure you have plenty of rocks so they can sunbathe and plenty of little tunnels and hides so they can feel uh, nice and secure. Also, this is some food, just a demonstration of what I feed them. There's chicken, a bit of last night's spaghetti, carrot, banana and a bit of dried pe uh, reptile pellet food. So that's what you feed them daily. And yeah, just make sure uh, we're going to have to modify this enclosure because once it, as you can tell, it's all tin so it gets direct sun on it. It warms up uh, quite considerably. So we're just going to cut out a vent on the front so it just provides a bit more uh, circulation in there and it doesn't uh, cook them. And it, also it's important to have a water source in your enclosure so they can get lots of water. And obviously once, um, yeah, that's pretty much it and when you want your enclosure protected you just have a bit of as you can see we've got this just goes over the top prevents any you know kookaburras snakes anything like that getting in there and possibly eating your pets now this is a different variety of blue tongue I have this is a blotched blue tongue an alpine form that just means it's a bit darker color and he's about eight and a half years old he was one of the first uh, reptiles that I've got and he's still going strong and pretty much the same care as the uh, eastern blue tongues but if you're going to keep them indoors you just have a slight, uh, slightly cooler temperatures than the easterns because they come from a more southerly range the uh, blotched blue tongues uh, around Melbourne that sort of area so it's a fair bit cold once again they're live bearers so they give birth to uh, live young and splotch he's about fully grown right now so he's pretty big and uh, once again he loves um, you know snails, banana, watermelon and uh, yeah great lizard to have easy to care for and they're just you know a beautiful uh, little critter to have 